<clears throat> and if you get a box that pops up and asks you for your username and password, that's the same exact credentials that you use to get into your computer every day. Your students will probably have the same um, question. How do I get into the site if they've never used it this year? They can either type in ori.discoveryeducation.com, or if you go to Ed Elements dashboard, they have the link in there. That's where I got it from. Excellent. I did find if, you know how you can make a shortcut, if you hit that little square with the arrow up and tell it to save? We've been finding that if the kid's trying to do that route and save it to their iPad's home screen, it won't work it will change the ori.discovery to like ADF and then it won't work. So um, those are your two ways. Either type in ori.discovery education or go through your dashboard. So I'm going to do kind of a little overview of the site. Um, hopefully you all see a little cheetah on your screen. This is the, the newer form. If you see a red banner up top that says try out the new experience, you want to make sure you do that so we all have a cheetah on there. On the right side, the first thing we're going to check out is Global News or uh, Global Rec. Every Monday, these, uh, the Discovery Ed people scour the globe for the best world news. And they pick some of the most interesting things that happened in that country that day. And they make up a four-minute video, and they do this every Monday. So every Monday, you have a new video about what's going on in the world. So if you don't like to watch the news, you can just watch your Global Rec. Why don't we all click on the uh, blue word for Global Wrap 2014-1217. And I'm guessing they took some time off for the holidays. That's why it has been updated. But you can see here, <clears throat> if I want to watch the whole video, it's 3 minutes and 41 seconds. Um, maybe I'm doing something about Pakistan. And I want my kids to, maybe I want to use this as a hook. Or maybe I just want to have a little conversation with the kids when I first started off. I see the Pakistan video is only 26 seconds long, so I'm not going to waste a lot of time on it. But what's good about it is if you notice, every video <clears throat> the segment that I go to, it features the country that we're speaking about in bright orange, and it shows the rest of the globe around it in gray. It also will have the flag of the country, and it labels the capital city. So it's a nice way your kids can now kind of hopefully visually identify on a map, oh, okay, there's, there's Pakistan right there. I remember it. And um, you can watch the video. They're short. They're, they're pretty neat. And like I said, it changes every Monday. See, it's a nice way to get some nice little opening discussion with your kids. Okay, does anyone have any questions about the global wrap? Okay, all right. So I'm going to go back to the home page. You could just hit the word discovery education <coughs> up here. <coughs> and... Also on the right side, right underneath Global News, we're now going to go to On This Day. When I was a science, uh, math teacher, uh, when I was an art teacher, I always had a hard time trying to get new and invigorating ideas. I would kind of get to, you know, that rut, and you're like, oh, man, here we go again, clay. Here, all right, kids, let's make some clay. And you start to do the same stuff over and over again. It gets a little boring. But what this can do, this can maybe invigorate you and give you some new, fresh ideas and start off with some hooks and some lessons with your kids. So if we all click on the word on this day, this will open up a calendar for you. And it's a calendar connected to your content. So more of a historical faction. So on this day is a calendar where I can pick and pull ideas and resources. So on the right, you got all your subjects. Pick whatever subject that you teach the most. I'm going to go to Art and Humanities. I got to get to the calendar. I, got, I accidentally Did you hit on this day? Out. Oh, yeah, you're right here. Go up to the top of, of that view. Click on right the view. So I know on this day for Arts, thank you, Ann. In 1918, magician Harry Blackstone had his first performance. Who was Harry Blackstone? I don't know. My kids probably don't know. But what I can do is I could show them the additional material that goes with it. I can hyperlink to this. So once you click on your content area, click on the blue word of whatever happened on that day. And now I got a full video about the Roaring Twenties. So, you know, what was the 1920s like? Well, I got a video about it, and this magician was doing some stuff at that time. And they also have video segments underneath. Depending on sometimes what you pick on what days, they, they won't always have video segments. Sometimes you'll find an article. Sometimes you'll find uh, a picture. But it's 
material that supports whatever the topic was that day. Now let's say I don't like the arts and humanities. Maybe I want to choose a different topic. So I'm going to hit that little word up there, return to topics. And I want to pick a different one. Maybe I want to do uh, an interdisciplinary thing, and I want to team up with my math teacher. So I'm going to go to math. All right, the birthday of Gordon Wyburn. Who is this? So I click on his name. And now I have, again, some full videos and video segments about deep sea trenches and stuff. So it's just a nice way that you can maybe try and come up with some ideas. You could plan ahead. So maybe if I want it, uh, like I got something on January 12th, but I kind of don't like it. What happened on my day? So I can click on January 12th in my calendar and go to Art and Humanities. And the first, art, the first American Museum opens up. That's something I could do a lesson on. So we can do that. They also have more material. Um, they'll do massive events going on. They have holidays. Last month they had Vegetarian Awareness Month. And they had these tips and guidelines about um, nutrition and how to eat better for you. So whenever you're stuck on something, you're kind of bored, go to your calendar for on this day and see what you can come up. And again, you can filter it by the, the week or the month. And you can get stuff that way. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go back to our page. So I'm going to click on the blue Discovery Education logo up top. And we've done the right side of the home page. Now we're going to do the left side. On the left side, um, we have three little um, markers here for latest. I got activity, most popular content, blogs. Activity is kind of things that Discovery Ed is doing. For example, they had um, last month they went to the Kabani Yogurt Factory as a virtual field trip. And they were taking questions live time from kids asking, you know, how do you make your yogurt? What's the process like? What does it look like? And they did this tour of the whole lab as a nice little science thing. If you plan to do anything about maybe medieval literature, you're doing ancient, um, maybe England at some point, they're doing a virtual field trip to Tower of London. Even though it already happened, you can watch the archive. The same thing about the White House, getting polar bears in your class if you're doing an animal lesson. But they have lots of these great virtual field trips that they've done that you can post and check out. If you're a math teacher, they're going to be unveiling a math tech book on uh, January 8th. You can apply for it and check it out. If you're a math teacher and you're curious about what it might look like, check out the agenda and where it says um, right here, apply for the math tech book. I'm sure you already have an additional math textbook, but there might be some things in here that you might like better or worse than what you have already. So you can just fill that link out and you can check it out. But they have the math tech book that you can check out. And um, back here, okay. So those are the virtual field trips, all activity. Do you have a question? Okay. All right, now let's say I don't want to waste 30 minutes searching all over, thank you, searching all over Discovery Ed for content. I just want to steal what everyone else has done, save myself some hassle. So let's all check out, thanks, the most popular content, Lincoln, next. So I'm right up top on the left, and it's in between activity and blogs, and we're going to go to most popular content. So the most popular content by default shows me what everyone in the world is checking out on Discovery Ed. A lot of people are checking out the Global Wrap and Discovery Atlas Interactive Map. But what about me? What about my class? So why don't you pick your grade and then your subject. What are all the math teachers doing right now? Okay, this is it. Why do I need to search it all over Discovery Ed? Everyone else is doing this, so I'll do it too. Oh boy, I got myself into something I can't get out. Uh oh, what happened? What's it look like? Well, I was on the, uh, there's, <clears throat> I put in social studies content and it was uh, Atlas Interactive Map. Yeah. And I clicked on Russia and I got this video thing popped up and now I can't click out of it. Do you see like a close or an X anywhere? Yeah. <laughs> I'm clicking on the X and nothing's happening. You trying the back arrow? No. There oh. we go. Oh, right. Easy, right? <laughs> 
Okay, so that's most popular activity. These are just places you can go for your stuff. Okay, anyone have any questions on any of that? Okay, now we're going to do uh, an advanced search. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Well, let's, let's go to um, your Streaming Plus. So Streaming Plus is kind of the new stuff that they got for you in the district. And in order to get to Streaming Plus, do you all see the light blue My DE services? That will give you a drop-down menu. And then you want to pick Streaming Plus. So Streaming Plus um, bundles your content together. Um, it has lots of interactive stuff for your kids. Uh, if you're a science teacher and you felt like you've gone over a lot of stuff already with your tech book, I would encourage you to check out STEM Connect if you feel like you've done a lot of this stuff already. Like, yeah, I know Discovery. So see what's in there. Everyone else, I would recommend you pick the, you should already be sixth through eighth. And then you want to pick your subject that you primarily teach. So that was visual and performing arts. <clears throat> and what we want to do is we want to drill down, start with the biggest number, and get smaller. So pick your topic. Why would it say no data count? If that happens with some people that were using Internet Explorer I saw Am today. I using Explorer? No. No, I'm on a Chrome. Nope. Okay. Maybe try refreshing it. That happened today as well. Or maybe click on another subject and go back to it. So under Visual Performing Arts, there are 1,623 visual arts resources. So I'm going to click on that. And I kind of had the blank thing, too. All right, there we go. I'm on blank, too. So I got a big number. And then I want to get another big number. There are uh, 510 resources about music history. So let's all check on that. <clears throat> and I'll wait for all of you guys to get your search results screen, which basically have all these different media types. And what we're gonna drill it down is to one particular media type. So I'll give you about a second or two to go through all that stuff. Okay. Does everyone have some resources up now? Mm -hmm. Okay. On the left, I can filter this down. So right now, I got to go through 510, and I don't want to waste so much time on 510 resources. So I want to drill it down. Maybe I can focus on a particular topic, but what we want to do is look under media type. Under media type, which is right below grade, you're going to see things that your kids can view, they can listen, they can read, they can interact with. There's a lot of options. In the box that says media type, Hit that little expand all plus. Okay. There might not be read for everything. So, like for example, there's no skill builder for for this music one, but someone else might have skill builder. Does anybody see skill builder under their media type? They don't get that one. If you do, I recommend you check that out. They have some really neat stuff. Like they have for English teachers, they have a skill builder on writing sonnets and haikus, which is kind of like an interactive. Oh, here game. I have. A, I, I picked a different thing. I okay. More, more stuff. Gotcha. And um, I'm going to go to audio, and I'm going to drill it down. So now this only shows me 34 um, audio pieces that I want to do. Some of these are samples of music. Some of these are podcasts. Some just might even be a lecture. But this is how we're going to save what we got. So we're all going to save one thing right now. And you can pick anything out of your list, but we're going to save it uh, to our quick list and to our folder. If you look in the lower right-hand corner of any of those things that you found, hit the little plus, and now turn to a check mark. When you hit the little plus, that's going to go to your quick list. My quick list is on the bottom down here. And if I click on the word quick list, this is kind of stuff that I would use maybe like, maybe I was making up a big unit plan, and I want to get a little bit of this, and a little bit of that, a little bit of that, and build it all up so that way I can create it for later. 
Or maybe I know I'm going to be sick tomorrow, and I need to find a couple things quickly for my kids to do. So I can go to my quick list. Yeah, you're feeling sick already, right? <laughs> Let's say I, I put in the wrong thing in my quick list. I don't like it. You can hit the little X, and it will go away. So the quick list is just a quick way to get to all your stuff. Now, let's say I'm planning for months down the road, or I was a semester-long teacher, so I can utilize something every semester. Let's all hit the little down triangle next to that plus. And now I have a couple options. If I hit add to my content, that's going to put it into one of my saved content folders. You can assign it to a whole classroom or a student. So if you've created classes in Discovery Ed, you could share it out to a whole class or just an individual kid. Um, you can make up an assignment in Discovery Ed and you can attach one of these to it. But if you're using Edmodo, you really don't need to make up assignments in here. You really don't need to make up classrooms in here. You can pretty much do it all on Modo. You're just sharing the resource. And here's the easy way to do it with the Modo. This is probably one of the best things I've seen so far. If you hit that little down triangle and then share, you'll get a list of all these social media types that you can use. Do you see Edmodo on here? You hit the little guy with the glasses and it will automatically open up Edmodo for you. If you're logged in, it will take you right to that posting screen. Tell me that again. Start again on that. So you hit the down triangle. Down triangle. And then share. Share. And then you hit the Emoto face. Little guy with the glasses. Yeah. Excellent. Now you notice right here it has the red X, the link. I just watched great composers. You know, maybe Anne and Ruth are in my class and they don't understand this musical concept yet. So I'm going to send it right to them so that they can work on some stuff while I'm having a small group with my other kids that need to work on something. Or maybe you can collaborate on a project together. But this is what, <clears throat> when you guys are get done analyzing your data, you can have your kids working on something else that you just assign them to work on. And you can really capitalize on that small teacher-led group that you work with those kids. And just type your note, just say, you know, please listen to this and send away. If you want to make an assignment, um, somebody a couple periods ago was saying, I got a kid in ISS right now, I want him to work on something. So what we did with her is we made up an assignment, we went back to Discovery Ed, and we went to copy, and that copied the whole address right there, and then I can go back to that assignment, and I can say, you know, for I ISS, Describe it, and then I'll just hit the link down here on the bottom. I'll put that in there for that one student that's in ISS or maybe has been out all week, or um, you know they're telling you, hey, I'm going on vacation, and I need some work to do. So these could be some things. So you could send it to a kid, a whole class, or a couple kids in one shot. Well, that's how you can do that. And then when the kid clicks on that link, they have to log into their Discovery Ed account, which again is the same stuff they use to get into their iPad. Okay. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about um, sharing, saving content? Okay. Okay. Uh, next one. Let's check out. Um, so we we kind of picked our topic and we drilled it down. Now let's maybe find a video that has closed captioning on it. And what we do for that is we're going to go to advanced search right up here. And under advanced search, you could filter out a lot of things that you may have been annoyed with Discovery Ed in the past. Like that kid who looked like he walked off the set of Double Dare and had that very dated late 80s, 90s clothes. And you find the stuff is too dated. So now what we can do... <laughs> is you can exclude all classic titles. So you can check that off. So anyone who's complained about how old stuff is on Discovery Ed, you can now get rid of it. Um, if you're doing something for National History Day, you need to have kids using primary source documents, this is a great way to get your primary source documents. Um, I did green screen projects with my kids, and they had an edit video 
to make it the background. So I would check off include only editable titles so we can edit video and put that into our projects, kind of like public domain fair use. But what I would like you all to check is make sure you put the boxes include only closed captioning titles. So when I had a lady from Discovery Ed came and did her little training with us, um, she said there's a study going on right now in like the Norway, Sweden, Netherlands area. And they're trying to study why they have such a low illiteracy rate over there. And they feel it's because they have closed captioning going on all the time. They have closed captioning on every TV all the time, everywhere. So I'm talking every bar, every restaurant, every department store, every TV in your house. If you see TV, then it has closed captioning on. And there's actually two colors that your brain are going to get triggered to want to read and focus on when they're in closed captioning. And that's black and yellow. So you're trying to have black and yellow, black and yellow. So if you have black background and yellow text, something is going to draw your kids into wanting to read it and read more, which is always good. So we're going to set that up for you. You're going to set it up one time, and we don't have to do it. So I'm in a advanced search. How do you get to advanced search again? I missed it. It's right up top. Oh. Under the search. So you don't have to worry about the keyword. Um, I would recommend you go to media type and do full video. <clears throat> this is also where you can find, I just want to find skill builders, or I just want to find writing prompts. This is how you can really drill down to it. And now I'm going to look for a sixth through eighth video. And maybe I'll do, uh, hmm. I'll do science. Okay. So we're going to set this up so you only have to do it one time. And we're going to set up your video to have the closed caption on just one time. And then you'll be good to go. Okay. So once you got that, please make sure you have include only closed captioning. That's most important. And then we hit submit. Now it's going to filter out all the stuff out there that is only closed caption videos. And there's 9,000 of them. Where are my where do I find my closed captioning? It should be a top oh. right square, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Ruth. All right. Now we're going to turn the closed captioning on. And in order to get to that, you just have to click on the name of a video. It doesn't matter. Just any video in that list. So here's my video screen. Remember before I was showing you how we could save stuff? You had that same options here. I can add it to my quick list, save it to my content, or my plus share. There's my Edmodo option again. I can quickly save that video, but this is how we turn our closed captioning on. Is everybody on a video screen? Yeah. And were you able to get a video up? Yep. Okay. I was just filtering more. Okay. I had too many. Okay. So if you don't see that little CC on the bottom, you may have to hover your mouse over it and it'll pop up. And once you see that CC, click on it. Now, by default, um, your closed captioning will be off. So move the off dot onto the on. <clears throat> your font, you can pick whatever font that you like. They give you a couple. I don't think it matters which one's more engaging than the other. You're going to see how big it looks like down here. So if maybe you want to increase the size a little bit, you can do that. And here's your color of your font. Make sure it's yellow. And here's your background. Make sure that's black. Okay, and then we have where do we want our closed captions to be? A lot of people think, of course, you should put your closed captions on the bottom. That's where it's always. But think about that little short kid that's in the back of your room that has to look over the giant kid's shoulders at the front of the room. They're not going to be able to see. Or maybe you have a whole bunch of tchotchkes and stuff on your desk that's blocking your smart board and the kids in the back won't be able to see that. So I was recommended to put your closed captioning up top and then most importantly make sure you save. All right, and you should see that it's saved and I'm gonna play it to make sure it worked. 
on the evening of July 20th. Okay. And you can see how big that is. So I can go back in and edit the size. Yeah. All right. Now check out this other great thing. See, this video is 41 minutes long. And I want to focus on one keyword, a vocab word, or a couple vocab words. I don't want to waste 41 minutes watching this whole thing. I want to find out if it has that vocab word. So what you can do is they have a transcript. So click on the little word transcript up top. This just took your whole video and has a script for it. So if I go to our particular word in the transcript, maybe down here, it will jump to 12 minutes and 41 seconds in my video. If I have a vocab word, maybe explorers, I, where it says search transcript, I'm just going to put explorers and see how many times it comes up. Oh, yeah, there's only one. How about America? There we go. Lots of America in here. So I can go through, and I can see that it's featured a lot. I can jump to part. Uh, they have a printing option. You can print off stuff. Maybe if you have a kid that has a bad iPad, or they prefer to uh, go through the script and maybe highlight words, you can probably do that for them as well. So that's transcript, vocab word, closed captioning, all which will be able to help you out a lot with your kids. Okay. Anybody have any questions on the advanced search closed captioning? So is that? Closed caption now that's saved forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any now, not every video in Discovery Ed has closed captioning on it, but any that's video that it does will do that for you. Okay. Uh, now let's check out some content collections. These are really neat. I have a whole unit made up for you already. So I'm going to click on My DE Services, and then I'm going to go down to Streaming Plus. And before we picked um, by our subject, and now underneath you have these other options. You have tools and resources. Can you start again? Yeah, I, I went to. Um, I was just on the video and I hit my streaming plus, or I think in yours it'll say DE services. Yeah. You go to that and then streaming, streaming plus. plus. Okay. Yep. So streaming plus is kind of like uh, another homepage, but just more features for you, more content and how it's all grouped for you. So this is how I can manage my class if I chose to make up classes. This could be how I can make an assignment up if I chose to make an assignment. I'll do the builder tools with you in a moment. If you're a science teacher and you felt like you've done and you mastered Discovery Ed, I recommend you check out STEM Connect. But what I like everyone else to do is check out Content Collection. And your Content Collection is basically units made up for you already. Um, you know, maybe if you're out again for a day or two, a great place to share some resources. If you're going to do a unit on animals, they got everything made up for you. They typically will do a unit for our holidays that are coming up. I've seen them for Halloween and Columbus Day and uh, a couple other ones so far. But um, why don't we all click on the name for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day? So this content collection has all these videos done for me on the left. And on the right, I got an encyclopedia article that they can read. I got a writing prompts that they can do. I got some clip art and images. If I really like this thing, I can again, I can hit plus share, put it on a moto, send it as a new assignment for the kids to work on. How about stuff for that soil and water essay that's coming? That might be on there too. They, I would search maybe soil and water under uh, the advanced search option, see if they have anything there. It's a great idea. Um, another thing, look under materials. If you've never done this topic before and you want to make it look like to your kids that you know it, they got the lesson plan <laughs> for you. <laughs> so just try to get your way through it. They got the lesson plan and the teacher guide for you to help you out. Okay, so we got, um, there's that one. If you want to see other 
content <clears throat> collections, you could just pick your subject on the left or even your grade and it could filter it down a little bit for you. So like here's here's 10 on health that I already made up, a whole bullying session. So the content collections are really neat. And uh, I think we're almost out of time and I think I just wanted to be able to show you one more. And that's under Builder Tools. So if you look up top under Builder Tools, and then check out Board Builder. When I was in my classroom, I used to use this website called Glogster. And Glogster was, was neat, but unfortunately when I got iPads, at the time, Glogster wouldn't work on the iPads. And I loved Glogster because it was basically gave my kids the ability to make a poster board or a trifold and not worry about, well, I don't have a printer at home or I don't have magazines at home. and Mine looks you know, a lot worse than yours. With this, you can pick and pull the best content through Discovery Ed. This one I made for a science teacher at Loris Middle who worked on about cones and flowers. And all I did is I just searched for Discovery Ed for stuff that they had. I found any picture, any video, um, any song, any article. I can even take my iPad and I can add a video through my camera. So I was able to videotape myself, insert it right into my board. And the kids loved that. They had a lot of fun just videotaping themselves. And they, the goal was they had to demonstrate their understanding of the concept. And that's what they had. To, or they could plan a skit. And they could do that. They could film a partner. But that was like their main piece. And I can easily just drag and drop boxes, um, whatever I want. It was so, so easy to do. Some teachers would use the board as their handout with like the instructions and materials and resources. And then they would tell the kids, you have to make a board. If you want to learn other ways or other tips to work with Board Builder, on the, um, on the agenda, under the big bold Board Builder, there's 50 ways to use it, 50 tips. Um, also the agenda, I just want to kind of cover it. There we got the black and yellow text. If you want to apply the math book, STEM resources, student accounts. There are tips on how to make up a class. It's very simple. They pretty much pull in your stuff from power school. Um, Ms. Newsbomber told me that she had a new student come into her class. She didn't have to necessarily move them into Discovery Ed. It was done for her. So you can check that out. Uh, Dr. Lodge McCannon is this guy who makes music based about all things educational. He's currently working on a project to do 50 songs. He's doing a song for every state. Oh, okay. All right, and that is it. So check that out, the agenda. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And I will post this at top of your Google Plus page. And we're all done. So thank you all for your time. Have a great day.